everybody, my name is Lee Fraser. I'm a technical specialist for Autodesk. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to stick objects to another surface using MASH. I've got a lot of questions on how I would go about taking uh, a group of objects and having them travel and slide across a surface. And you might think that'd be super simple to do. And if you went to the MASH waiter, you'd look through these and you could probably find some ways of sticking a few things together, but nothing super direct in terms of how to get this done and then also provide the flexibility after the fact. So I came up with a little bit of a workflow that uh, hopefully will work for or maybe it will give you some ideas on how to do a, maybe a variation of this or work on a variation of this and hopefully it'll help you solve some problems. Here I've got just a simple grid distribution of simple planes and you've probably seen me use simple planes before. A single polygon just gives me some speed and some uh, ability to go back after the fact and drop another object in this place and what I want to do here is just take this distribution and stick it to this surface. Now you might go about doing this with a, an object constraint or there's um, uh, different expressions that you could use but a simple way of doing this is to just go to the shrink wrap and just stick this to the surface so with a shrink wrap there's some different options here that allow you to have this stick to the surface in different ways there's bi-directional there's different object types I just I'm just gonna cheat here and replace this I've got an offset and if I undo that, and I've also got parallel to axis in this case, and um, I'm using Y as the, uh, as the target axis. And what this allows me to do is then go to my MASH network and add a transform node. And I'm going to right mouse button click in the controller section here, the controller null. And that's going to create just a simple transform locator. And just like that, I've got the ability to move this back and forth on the surface. And you can see that I've got the ability to also to rotate this. Uh, I can move it back and forth. Obviously, it does you know, constrain to the edge of the surface since that's what we're targeting. But this is just a really nice way of being able to control this on this surface. The problem sort of arises if I want to replace this with something else. So right now we're dealing with a simple plane so there's no distortion of, of, of the object happening it's just sticking the points onto the plane but if I were to take a sphere and do this uh, or replace these points with a sphere then I want to run into the the, the problem where my my sphere is going to flatten because of the shrink wrap so that's again pretty simple to, to remedy I've got a cone or just a standing object in the middle of my scene or just I kind of modeled it out just so it didn't look, look just like a cone uh, but I want to basically attach those to these points. Since I've already got the, the location that I need, then I just need something to go along for the ride. So I'm just going to create another mesh network. We'll make sure that we've got a mesh type. Uh, we're going to use a mesh target also. Uh, we'll just stick with the linear distribution type and then we'll just go ahead and switch that to mesh. And I'm just going to take my repro mesh, which is these, which are these points, and middle mouse button drag and drop that into that input mesh. And then we can go in and just play around with some of the different settings. Obviously random face center is what I really want, but if I wanted a match, a uh, one-to-one match for every one of these little bottles or whatever they are, I can just say flood mesh and then I get an even, even distribution that matches my grid. And of course from there, I can always go back and change any of those original, or uh, basically the layout of those original planes by adding a random node in there. So if I wanted to move this and one direction or another, I could do that. I could also go into the distribute section and say, well, I want uh, linear and I could add and subtract points from those grids or even I could, I could even do it here if I wanted to add and subtract it within the grid distribution. And we're not getting any collision detection or anything like that. You could experiment around a little bit with the world node because there's some um, simulated collision detection in there. But in this case, this is a pretty good way of scattering objects across a surface and then in turn, moving them back and forth along that surface. So there's a couple of ways we could take this a little further and I'll just show you some examples here. Here's an example basically with the same idea, but this locator has been animated. And then you can see I've got a ground plane down here that kind of gives it away a little bit. But once it gets to the end here, dynamics takes over. And if we look at the dynamics node within that mash network, you can see I've just keyed the positional and rotational strength. So once it gets to a certain point, those guys go down to zero and they kind of cascade along the surface. This has also been added as a collision object. Here's an example of using the same technique to create a very simple crowd. And what we're doing is taking uh, 
one of the characters that's in the content browser and creating an, an animated snapshot of about, I think, 16, yeah, 16 frames here and using that to attach to those single points that we're sliding across the surface. The exact same thing that we did with the last example. So we're using an ID node to cycle between those different snapshots um, and that gives us those points. Now we did have to center the pivots on each one of the snapshots to a single location, but that was pretty simple to do. And if you want to find out a little bit more in detail about that, Ian Waters has a great video on how to do a simulated crowd on his website, so check that out. And yeah, that is just another example, and hopefully this gives you guys some ideas on, on what you can do using uh, shrink wrap to attach a mesh network to an object. Thanks for watching.